So in the series on Czerny's Bach metronomization and in particular the inventions, we arrive now at number eight. Now, if you haven't seen, um, if you haven't seen the introduction to the series, there is a playlist in the description box called number one or certainly number four which is the modern version, number one, two, and three were recorded a few years back. And there you find an extensive introduction. We are not studying met the metronomization of Chernin here in the first place to understand Bach's tempi, though it would be interesting to take Czerny a bit more seriously, I would say, but that's for another take, for another time. Uh, we are here, we are using these um, comparisons with nine performances uh, compared to Czerny's metronomics for the inventions to see how these real life performances actually uh, correlate or uh, yeah with the Czerny's metronomics. So without further ado, here's num here is number eight. And it's an interesting piece. It's in 3-4. Now you can say a lot of things about 3-4 time signature. It's in general a little bit faster than common time. And um, you not as often will see as you would see in 2-4, also in 4-4 uh, actually, kind of excessive use of 30 second notes or trills or ornaments that are used on, you know, 8th notes uh, beats where you are not supposed to give an accent. You know what I mean? For instance, when you would have an ornament on the 2nd, 8th note of the first beat, that would of course imply a more 8th note beat structure than you would still are in that then then still being in three four don't know how to speak anymore today anyways um so but here doesn't that isn't the case journey marks allegro molto 152 is a really fast metronome mark if you want to compare that and i will bring it soon on the channel again or i haven't i don't know forgot but 152 is the if I'm not mistaken, it's a metronome mark given by Moscheles for the Sonat Facile of Mozart. Of course, nobody plays at 152, which is really, really, really fast. Um, there are no exceptions here in this piece that I can see why this shouldn't be a real Allegro. So being faster than the Tempo Ordinario 60 or let's say 66. So in whole bit, it would, this would be 76. For the quarter note which would which would, would make sense but you could say like this is not an allegro molto and there yeah there is a point that 76 to the quarter note it's not what we would consider to be an allegro molto now having said that the 152 for the quarter note literally so in single beat is not an option either even though we will see if in the comparison and the overview the two players meyer and lizitza they are, they're almost there. They're exactly the same speed. They're at 97% of Czerny's metronome mark in single beats. So that's pretty much spot on. Let's say they are 148. Don't remember. We will see in the overview. So, but um, the question is, if you then think about the Sonat Facile, mm, that's highly unlikely that Czerny had this in mind. But um, this is one of the four or five in which some players really get to 100 to the single beat metronomization and also this one which is one of the fastest invention, inventions is the only one i think where nobody is below Czerny whole beat even not your servant so without further ado here is the overview and then we will break it down
So if I go to the overview, it's as follows. Um, your servant is again the slowest. I'm playing this piece in 89, so this is 59 59% if you compare my tempo to Czerny and single beat. Leonard, Gold, 100, Nikolaeva, Koopman. It's interesting again here to see what the impact of tempo is. So um, it's interesting to compare. Sheaf is 122. It's a nice performance, like very light in the light hand and the, and the left hand is really difficult. Gieseking always surprises me. I mean, I put him somewhere on an average because, I mean, Gieseking's tempo is it, it's, it's so surprisingly, it's, it's so unsteady. It, it's all over the place. I don't know what's wrong. Um, if he played like that or it's only here in the Bach Inventions. And then Meyer and Lizitza um, are on uh, 97%. So again, um, if you would play this on the clavichord in that tempo, there is no way you're going to survive. I, on, the, on the harpsichord neither. So this is, this is a no-brainer that it's not possible. On the piano it's possible. Lizitza certainly proves it. She plays on an errare. If, if I'm not mistaken, you could say like it's like a little bit too slow, but uh, yeah, but now we're speaking about almost nothing. It's just one. Uh, one tempo indication on the metronome. The thing, however, is, and then we're going to compare the single beat and the whole beat, because here I have to slow down my own performance and the single beat performance, for which I take also my, so they have to have an impression of single beat speed on the clavichord. The thing here is we shouldn't forget before um, you want to jump into the comment section and say, hey, listen, gee, the, all, the entire series is... Uh, um, it's, it's, it's nonsense because now some, some pieces, yeah, they are slower, but here the players prove that I can play in single beat. Well, Lizitza's point is very clear. Some some of you, of some of the commenters wrote the other day, like Lizitza could play faster as she could. No, she made a clear statement. She plays as fast as she can. Um, and we're going to do something also at the end of, uh, after the comparison, we're going to give you the end of Meyer and Lizitza's performance, because there you will see what happens when you play so much faster than it's actually indicated. You have, you are, you hit your face to a wall, you know, at the end you have to pull all the brakes and then the music suddenly becomes much lower to end. You actually end in whole beat. It's just the last two or three beats that you have to really pull the brakes. And, you know, in Baroque music, there is a tradition or there is something that you can do on the penultimate. Oh, that's a difficult word. Let's not use that on the note before the last one. It's about that word. You know what I mean? You can like stand still like. And there everything comes together and then you give the last note. It's possible. But it's not like da 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 finally the car stops because before it hits the other car. It's not what um, what what this practice is about. So uh, and on top of that, remember that what Czerny writes in the preface of this volume, which is uh, which he uh, describes as a collection for easy pieces. Um, that's not easy what Lizitza is doing there. Even what Copeland is doing on the harpsichord, just to try it. It's really, really difficult in the left hand. And on the piano, what Schiff is doing there still with that kind of nuance, that Lizitza, well, she plays everything, of course, forte, because what, what are you going to do? You have to give the, an impulse to the key. But Schiff is still making like a nice cantable sound on the left hand, which is really, really, really hard. He's using, of course, also the, uh, the double escapement there. But having said all of that, this is a piece Allegro Molto. Well, that isn't single beat possible. So... The point is, however, if it proves anything different from what we have said before. I'm going to share you now with you now the uh, result single beat and whole beat for which I used my own version. As I said, I slowed down my version to a uh, whole beat. So the sound will be horrible because if you slow down um, a, a recording, the computer has to fill up the gaps, which of course it cannot do. So it will be air you can speed up very easily. Do remember that when you go on internet and you find like single beat recordings, it's absolutely the easiest thing to do is to speed up performances. Thank you. 
you could hear at the end like what happens when you don't make any kind of ritter down it's like boom it's over like really so on the clavichord of course what becomes clear is this is not possible on the clavichord by no one Lizitza can come over to my place and try it at the clavichord it's just not possible I, I highly doubt it's possible on the fritz uh, but that's of course um, yeah um, n n not really important the important thing is to remember what Jenny wrote at the beginning of his preface I cannot stress that enough and it sounds like a little as excuse here but it's really not um it's it's also when you s hear some pieces like some chopin issues some other pieces played in single beat in an extremely um fast performance it doesn't reflect on the entirety of the metronome uh, or understanding the metronome marks in the 19th century you have always to position to contextualize so yeah there you have it i promised you to just share very quickly the ending of both players um, which is also telling and i'll do that right now So again, this is not just a normal ritardando, it's like really a lot in order not to hit your face to the wall. By the way, um, I said 150, 248 is not a big of a difference, but you hear it's a difference. This is slower than the sped up version of my, and then Marcella Meyer. Well, you can say that's not big of a deal when you are exagger exaggerating, but it's just oh, those little signs that say there is something wrong. So uh, again, if you want to take this video or this 152 Allegro Molto, two players to reach the level, uh, the single beat level, go ahead and, and be happy with your life, but it will not solve all the problems. And still seven other players here are much slower than actually um, the perform I, I, I forgot to check what the average is actually here it is 78 percent so we're right in the middle between single beat and whole beat okay there you have it up to the next one will be an interesting one as always and um, hope to see you then back thanks for watching and we see each other soon again bye <laughs>